Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about switching from aromatase inhibitors to tamoxifen. There are lots of you in our comments and questions who are unable to tolerate the aromatase inhibitors, yet you want to stay on some form of adjuvant endocrine therapy. Before I go on, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We love having more subscribers, and when you subscribe, you will get to see all the new content we put out. We put out one to three videos a week, so there's always something new to watch. Let's say you've been on an aromatase inhibitor and you're not tolerating it it's very likely that your doctor will offer you a chance to switch to a different aromatase inhibitor. There are three. And if you don't tolerate the second aromatase inhibitor, we've covered this before in our endocrine therapy playlist, it's very unlikely you'll tolerate the third one. So the first aromatase inhibitor you don't tolerate, the second one you don't tolerate, it's probably not worth trying the third. And then you might feel really exposed and unprotected, I'm not taking anything. So for most people, tamoxifen would be an option. There are a couple people in whom we worry about it, and I can cover that in just a moment. But switching from an aromatase inhibitor to a tamoxifen has been a clinical strategy we've studied in clinical trials, and you get additional benefit after an aromatase inhibitor from switching to tamoxifen. There's no reason to think that being on, a, being on tamoxifen after not tolerating aromatase inhibitors is better than not being on anything. We have lots of data to that effect. So when I talk about people switching, we know that most people switch because of side effects of the aromatase inhibitors. Those side effects include joint pains, vaginal symptoms, and other side effects that are particular to the effects of the aromatase inhibitors, which work by lowering estrogen. Tamoxifen does not lower estrogen, so it has a completely different side effect profile. And if you don't tolerate aromatase inhibitors, thinking about an entirely different class of drug is reasonable. We do this with blood pressure medicine. We do this with weight loss aids. We do this with antihypertensive and diabetes medications. So switching from one class of drug to another is part of the way we take care of people. We rarely say there are no other options. If you don't take this drug, there's nothing for you to do. Tamoxifen, because it works a different way, has a different side effect profile, and some of those side effects are actually really good. In particular, the improvement in bone mineral density. Tamoxifen after menopause looks like estrogen to the bone. It doesn't look like estrogen to the breast cancer, but it does to the bone, and that's a really nice side effect. Estrogen helps strengthen bones. So if somebody were on an aromatase inhibitor and had loss of bone mineral density, going on tamoxifen would not only take away the aromatase inhibitor, but give them the benefit of tamoxifen. So it's a net positive in terms of your bones. The other thing tamoxifen helps with is cholesterol. It lowers the LDL, or so-called bad cholesterol. And tamoxifen's doing that is really helpful for people with high cholesterol or who have heart disease and watching their cholesterol go up, if it does, and it doesn't always, on an aromatase inhibitor can make tamoxifen more appealing. Tamoxifen also has a whole different side effect profile. While it, yes, does have hot flashes, people who have hot flashes with aromatase inhibitors may not have them with tamoxifen. People who have vaginal dryness with aromatase inhibitors may not have vaginal dryness with tamoxifen. So those are nice to think about. There are two things that are serious with tamoxifen that we have to mention as part of our responsibility to you, our viewers. One is tamoxifen increases the risk of blood clots. It doesn't increase it a whole lot, but in somebody who's at higher risk and who is not on a blood thinner, tamoxifen might that increase in risk of blood clots might not be acceptable to the patient and her medical team. So if you had a blood clot when you were in your 20s and there was no precipitating factor, you weren't on birth control pills, it just happened and nobody can figure out why, 
then being on tamoxifen might not be in your best interest unless your doctor thinks you're at high enough risk even without tamoxifen and thinks you should be on a blood thinner. We do not recommend tamoxifen plus a blood thinner as treatment for uh, preventing blood clots from tamoxifen. The bleeding risks are higher. And similarly, there's no evidence that aspirin plus tamoxifen is a proven strategy to decrease the rare, but yes, indeed, documented risk of blood clots. And the other thing is, if you are concerned about vaginal bleeding, tamoxifen has many more side effects in terms of irregular menstrual bleeding, uh, polyps developing, and there's a rare but real risk of an increase in cancer of the uterus or endometrial cancer. So those are things to think about if you've had problems with bleeding, if you've had uh, concerns about cancer of the uterus and you still have your uterus, tamoxifen might not be the right option for you. But if you are motivated and if it's been advised that you stay on endocrine therapy, you are not tolerating the aromatase inhibitors, switching to tamoxifen is something you can discuss with your medical team. If you're wondering about different treatment options and whether an aromatase inhibitor or tamoxifen might be part of your treatment plan, I'd love to invite you to go to yerba.com and get your personalized yerba report. Your yerba report is created by cross-referencing the medical records you either upload or give us permission to access, and then we generate a report of everything we know about your cancer in a really easy-to-use, jargon-free format. And then in a separate tab, you just click down, we show you all the treatment options that might be available to you, why and why not, and the pros and cons of each. And if you decide to get a premium subscription, you can ask specific question of our team regarding your case, and we get back to you within one to two to three days. I've covered a lot today. I hope it's been helpful. Drop a comment or question below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.